Hello everyone, Paul from High Tech Legion, and guess what? Haswell has come. And what do I have here? I have the Asus Z87A motherboard that we're going to take a look at. So, give it a second. I'll go ahead over to my uh, bench over there and we'll take a look at the board. Testing one, two, three. Testing one, two, three. Taking a closer look at the box itself, you'll notice that Asus did away with the P and all the other uh, menagerie, as I like to call it. It's simply laid out now. So this is now the Asus Z87-A motherboard. So there's no P in front of it. There's no, no other denominations. Of course, this motherboard is built for the fourth generation core processors from Intel, which is Haswell at the time being. It's got an 1150 socket, socket 1150. And if we look at the board, you'll notice Asus has changed their colors. They decided to go with gold and black from the original blue that we might be used to. So looking at the box itself, of course you can see it's got TPU, EPU, Digi VRM, Turbo Mode, and of course the Ultimate Cooling. Now, DIP2, we are, you will see some of the higher end motherboards which actually have DIP4 which is Dual Intelligent Processor. So this has Digi Plus VRM on it. It is SLI and Crossfire capable. It has DTS stereo on board. Let's turn the box around, take a look at the box. Of course, you can see we have a picture with some of the specifications on that. This also basically tells you about how to set it with the turbo mode with the auto OC, the EPU, which is your power saving mode. You can also remotely control this with Bluetooth. And of course, it comes with Fan Expert 2, which I think is probably one of the better ones on the market. And if you, if you are watching this video, Ron and I are actually going to do a head-to-head -head comparison with all the Z87 motherboards and their fan controllers. And we're going to check out and give you our opinion on which one we feel is the best. So, let's go ahead and take this a look at the uh, accessories that come with it. Of course you have your I.O. port, which goes that way. You're going to get two SATA cables, an SLI bridge, and I love these connectors because basically plug it into your motherboard and you don't have to worry about messing putting your putting your case uh, panel uh, switches on there they automatically go on here just plug it right into the bottom there of course this is another one for USB then we have a user's guide with the driver disk inside of it so basically the Z87A is going to be more of the entry-level mainstream board. But one thing I can say about ASUS is they don't skimp. Even though this board is going to be somewhere around 149, they don't skimp on the quality of the board and they don't skip, skimp on what they're going to give you as in features on the board. You're still going to get the good capacitors. You have decent heat sinks on it you still have SLI, triple SLI. They do give you a PCIe port on this one and two PCIe X1s. And of course the uh, PCH heatsink. Now, let's go ahead over the topology of the board itself. We have an eight pin power connector, which is here. 
we have our heat sink. We have two fan control connectors for your CPU fan. And that is followed by dual channel DDR3 memory. If you can see that button here, this is the memo OK button, which, if, which you are used, probably are used to finding on their higher end boards, but of course it does have a mem OK button on it. So if you have a problem with your memory, you change your memory and the board doesn't want to boot up, hit mem OK, it'll go back to its SPD, it'll get you into the BIOS, you'll be able to change your settings. Going across the side here, we have another fan header and our 20 fin, 24 pin fan connector, I mean a uh, power connector. USB 3 port for your case. You have one, two, three, four native SATA 6, and then you have two Asmedia SATA 6 cable uh, ports. Down here you have your EPU switch to set your power savings just on the motherboard itself so you don't have to go into your OS. And you have your TPU switch. Basically, you have TPU 1 and 2. TPU 1 is going to give you a... ASUS has changed their BIOS a little bit, so you have per base clock, and then you have per ratio on it. If you watch our BIOS video on the ASUS UEFI BIOS for the mainstream motherboards, you'll, we will talk about that and we'll show you the settings there inside the BIOS itself. Another fan header. Of course, this is for your case connectors down on the bottom here. You have one, two, three ports for your USB. This is your audio port here. Of course, you have a couple serial ports. In the center here is your back to BIOS button. You want to go back to BIOS? Hold that down. It'll bring your board to BIOS for you. Let's go ahead and turn it this way and we'll take a look at the ports. Remember, I said they really don't skimp much on the stuff. So of course you're going to get your your audio connectors. You're getting a Realtek LAN with one, two, three, four USB 3.0 ports. This is native. You have over here you have a, a PS2 connector. You also have two uh, USB connectors for your mouse and your keyboard. This is a digital out or optical out. Underneath that is HDMI. Now if you're looking right over here in between, this is for Thunderbolt. Something that you might not see on another board that's only going to be about 150 bucks. This is your VGA and of course your DVI. Take a look at the back of the board. And then let's look at the socket here. Of course, like I said, this is for the new Haswell processor, it's socket 1150. There you go. So after you, after you watch this, you might want to go ahead and watch the BIOS video. We will definitely show you all the new, uh, all the new features that the ASUS UEFI BIOS come with. And you're also going to get AI Suite 3, which is more intuitive than the last. It also has a better graphical uh, output. It's uh, a lot easier on the eyes. They've done some tweaking to it. They've also done some tweaking to the UEFI BIOS. It's at a higher resolution. You can see things better. So let's go ahead back to the workbench. I'll give you my thoughts about the board and we'll be done. All right, everyone. The ASUS Z87A, $149. It's not bad. You get a lot of options with this board for that price. This is getting an Editor's Choice Award from us. Why? I'll tell you why. It's got a lot of features that you would expect on the higher end boards. You have a DVI, you have HDMI, you have optical out, you have USB 3 ports, you have one, two, three, four, five, six SATA ports. You get EPU and TPU switches that you could switch from the motherboard to just do automatic overclocking. Of course, you could use AI Suite 3 in order to overclock this board. Decent looking heat sinks on it. They didn't put those little anodized things that some of the other manufacturers might do on their lower, you know, or what they would consider a lower end board. 
So it's feature rich for the price. Yes, and you can still do try SLI. If you got some 780s from NVIDIA right now, you can go ahead and do that. So again, you know, looking at this board, this is a viable option for anybody, even an enthusiast, if you just don't feel like spending the extra cash for uh, for one of the higher end boards. Why? I overclocked this thing to 4.7. Didn't require a lot of voltage, didn't require more voltage than any of my higher end boards that I reviewed. So this is definitely a great buy. And as I said, 149 bucks. Editor's Choice Award. Thank you everybody. And remember, if you haven't seen it at High Tech Legion, you might not have seen it at all. Make sure you subscribe to this channel so you can see this. Of course, you're watching this video, and you'll get updates to other videos that we're going to offer. And go to www.hightechlegion.com for the full review on this board and other boards in the Z87 lineup from ASUS. Visit us on Facebook, facebook.com, HTL Reviews. Stay thirsty, my friends. See you the next time. Bye-bye.